Hi guys, and this evening I've got two of the big, big lenses here. Um, one is the Sigma uh, 135 f1.8 art lens, and the other one is the Sony uh, 135 f1.8 G Master lens. This is my new purchase. This one I've had for a little while, and I just wanted to see before I sold this one how much better the G Master is. You know, you know, for the extra money, it's quite a bit of money extra. And you know, it's a case of what does this lens give you that this one doesn't? Um, one is an aperture ring, which actually I've kind of missed because I use the RX10 Mark IV as an everyday camera. Um, I'm recording on it now. That's got a aperture ring, and you find yourself just it's so much faster than a wheel. So the wheel on the front or the back of the camera, you know, just quickly rotate you know it's it's done you can have it in auto obviously and you can adjust it via the wheel as well but I just generally use it as the aperture ring um, lengthwise with the hoods on the Sigma is slightly taller but then the Sony is slightly wider a bigger diameter sharpness wise so close it's un, you know, undetectable really um, but where the Sony comes into its own is the speed of the autofocus much much faster um, you know it's a case of I've noticed in the last few days of using it it's hitting like the autofocus on the eyes for example the eye autofocus much much quicker and more reliably and and, in, and you'll see in this video how this one is eye autofocusing and face detection in pretty much almost complete darkness which I was like what <laughs> that's not right where this didn't do too bad considering um, it's older tech, so you know, and it's cheaper. It was finding the faces, but it started to hunt quite a bit, um, which was a shame. But they're both amazing lenses. It's all down to your budget at the end of the day. This was seventeen hundred and fifty pounds. This was eleven hundred quid. So it's quite a bit of a, a jump in price. Um, build quality, both really nicely made. Sigma's a little bit heavier. Um, this G Master has got a few extra buttons. You've got you can uh, program these buttons here. <clears throat> You've also got an anti-click or a click with your aperture ring. So if you're doing video, you can just leave it anti-clicked so it's nice and smooth and quiet. Um, and that's about it, really. Uh, I have noticed also they've put like a felt inside the lens hood to stop any extra light bouncing around, where um, Sigma have put like a, um, almost like a corrugated effect in there, which obviously does help slightly. Um, both lenses... Quality-wise, like I said, they're very good. This is number 17. Quite a low number, serial number, number 17. Um, this one, I don't actually know how they work on thing, but obviously the Sony's just come out, so it's not been out that very long at all. <clears throat> Technology-wise, both very quiet. The You can hear this, but very, very slightly. The Sony is completely silent, absolutely silent. Um, like I say, it weighs slightly less, so the camera feels slightly more balanced in the hand compared to the Sigma and I'm holding these one in each hand and it's only like only about a kilo each thereabouts but this one is already feeling a little bit heavier than this one just by holding up like this um, so imagine holding it for an hour two hours whilst you're working this is where this one comes into its own because it's slightly lighter um, sounds silly but it's in the real world you know um, other than that both lenses for the money very expensive and do you use them that's the question you know, do you use the 135 range enough to own one of these? Uh, most people go for the 85 because it's a lot slightly um, wider angle of view and obviously you can work at closer distances. But because I do a lot outside stuff, I, I've got the space when I do photo shoots. The main difference between these two lenses, though, is your working distance. So the Sigma will focus down to around about 80 centimetres. The Sony will focus down to 70 centimeters or thereabouts, and that 10 centimeters doesn't sound a lot, but actually is quite considerably. You know, you can notice the difference in in the, or the size of your subject you're photographing. Um, so you know, it's, that's where another thing where it comes into its own. Um, like I say, um, so let's go and play with these. Um, you can see um, the differences. There's not a lot in it really. Um, Chromatic aberration and everything like that is better with the Sony, definitely. Sigma is a little bit there. Um, 
vignetting a little bit maybe but only in certain conditions um, like I say the autofocus is very fast on both of them but the Sony wins hands down in the real world um, and it is noticeable but this is still fast really fast um, and they don't really and in general do good lights and everything like that both cam both um, lenses sorry on the a7r3 that I use um, miss nothing absolutely nothing but as you get into the evening as the light starts to go and stuff like that if you still start using you know still shooting um, this is where the Sony comes into its own because it's focusing in completely well, well I'm say completely almost complete darkness uh, with no real issues at all um, where this the Sigma starts hunting quite a bit but you'll see that in a second as well um, so anyway um, let's go and play <coughs> So guys, I met up with Millie, a uh, really lovely girl, and we just went out and did some natural shots in the Bluebell Woods. The Bluebells at the moment are amazing. Um, so many woods around uh, my area that have them. Um, shooting Bluebells in sort of midday conditions probably isn't ideal, but you know we wanted to shoot. And as you'll see in part two, what happened later with Julia, um, because we shot in the dark. So two different types of shoots there, both with the Sigma and the uh, Sony GM lens as well. So um, both lenses are amazing, really works really well in sort of today's uh, climate with the, the sunshine, diffused light through the trees and everything like that. Really, really nice. As you can see from the photos in a second that they're mega sharp, the bokeh is lovely and unless I actually label the, the photos, there's no way you'd know which lens took them. So it's, it's that good. Um, all you really notice with the Sony, in my personal opinion, is ease of use because you've got the aperture ring so you can actually change your apertures really quickly. You've got your programmable button on the side. It's a little bit lighter. Um, it is, I think personally, it's a little bit sharper and also it, the bokeh is slightly creamier as such. Um, other than that, both lenses really really lovely and the other thing with the Sony is the um, the focus wheel and, and uh, aperture ring are very very smooth compared to the Sigma. What about if you were crouched down, see those bluebells there lit by the sun? Just there, a big bunch of them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah if you go into there and sort of crouch down I'll tell you, you could do, actually crawl, almost crawl through them, so yeah where you are there Go that way a little bit. That way. That way a little bit. That way a little bit. Yeah, very slightly. There you go. Then come this way, into the bluebells. That's it. And then almost crawl through them. <laughs> is it? Come down a bit more. Is it? Oh my god, they're in my Are they? Is it nice? <laughs> Really? Pick one and smell it. <laughs> what? Yeah. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> what was it? Oh, that's oh. probably just juice. Huh? Just juice. I need to get the flash out here. Because it ain't going to work otherwise very well. Because we're literally shooting into the sun. Sitting on? Oh. oh, nice. How lovely. So, as you can see here, we're shooting, uh, we're maybe getting her down into the bluebells a little bit more, trying to, uh, you know, throw off the uh, eye autofocus, and it just didn't even bother. It just, <laughs> it just, um, just hit every time. The only time, one time it didn't hit on the eye was when she had her eyes right down in the, um, the bluebells a bit, and, uh, you know it, it missed a little bit but other than that you can't expect um in a hundred percent all the time but it does does help you get the job done uh, the fact you can compose and get everything as you want it in one motion rather than having to 
I, I focus, you know, lock on the eyes and then hold it and then recompose. Um, where things could have happened, things could have moved. Your model might have moved forward slightly. I might have moved forward slightly, and that's where you get soft shots on the eyes. These lenses, both of them, Sigma and the Sony, are mega sharp. I mean, I'm talking, they're the sharpest lenses I've ever used. Um, and both produce amazing photos and it's noticeable uh, in everyday use. Um, these I'm shooting wide open. I'm outside, I want the blurred backgrounds, but even when you stop it down to like f4, f8, they become even crisper than they are even at f1.8. And, you know, they're just a joy to use, both of them. The Sony, though, is that one step ahead and the build quality about the same as the Sigma. It's different materials, but um, the focus wheel and everything seems smoother uh, than the uh, Sigma. The obviously you've got an aperture wheel which allows you to work quicker. Um, you've got your programmable buttons on the side if you want to lock off focus or whatever, or use eye auto focus button or whatever you want to do. Um, and the fact you can focus closer and things like that, and also the autofocus is faster, and it's noticeably quicker. Uh, not by a huge amount, it just seems more reliable in, in general, and just seems more fluid. Um, but like you say, if you put these pictures up, and I didn't label which lens I'd taken it from, you'd never know um, in, in general. Um, so for the money, they're both amazing. Back where you were, sort of over that way. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god, why did you get that? Huh? Did you get that? I think I did. <laughs> so after Millie fell on her ass after a um a really rotten old branch decided to give way. Uh not nothing to do with her weight or anything like that, it's just that she was so rotten it was funny. Um so that had a bit of comedy to the uh, the shoot. Uh we changed locations just up the road. Uh we spotted a um a rapeseed field, lovely and yellow, bright, so obviously the sun's out. Um, really nice bees everywhere um, really cool um, and uh, yeah just decided to do a few shots here before we called it a day um, we had two hours just to, just to get the shots done you've not seen hardly any of the shots I've taken these are just some of the ones I've just picked out because I like them um, and also I know she, uh, really like them as well she was really pleased with them so uh, that makes all the difference that's what the, the whole situation is for um you know so if you make people happy with the photos you give them you know that's even better so these shots are all the gm lens so i, I left the uh, sigma in the bag now because i'm i'm just using the gm because that's what i really want to use um as you can see here the eye autofocus is just bang on every single time um even through sort of uh, the rapeseed um flowers and everything like that it was still hitting the uh the autofocus really really cool um the other thing we did see was um a buzzard which was kind of cool which you'll see in a second um and i uh, just the autofocus just tracked it even though there's only a 135 lens um it was a case of uh it just tracked the bird and uh got a nice shot image even though i was shooting at what f1.8 still <laughs> Uh, wide open and uh, it was about 200 feet up in the air so um, this is the last shot um, as you can see how sunny it was and it was just a really as you can see the soft background nice and sharp image of Millie there and that was the kind of end of that shoot um, dropped Millie home I went home had a quick edit of these photos and then got ready for the evening shoot so make sure you tune in for part two of this uh, this comparison and you can see the difference between the Sigma and the Sony in lower light conditions and also don't forget to subscribe please click the notification bell so you get notified every time i do a video and also follow millie on her instagram which i should put a link in the um comment bit you know the description um, and also my instagram as well um there's also be a link there so see you soon guys